Hey guys, SK here, back with another Clash Royale video, and today it is time for a global tournament video. The Royal Tournament is underway, this is the first day, and so you already know I'm going to be trying to come at you guys with some early content, you know, right as the tourney starts, because I know a lot of people have been asking, uh, in general, for earlier global tourney videos rather than later, so that, you know, you can watch first and then play yourself. I totally understand that anyway. So, it is going to be the Queso Cup Golden Edition Royal Tournament, if you can see right here. And it's actually really cool, in my opinion. Like, this kind of banner and design looks really sick. And I honestly just really like it. I don't know if it's just me. Um, one of my friends told me it's just like a block of white and then some cheese on the side or something but i think it, the banner looks super cool honestly and the reason that it's a special kind of edition if you guys aren't in the loop is because the queso cup is going to be i think it's generally a tournament that's held every year uh but this year you know for crl they have golden tickets to be handed out to different community events. So Queso Cup's one of the community organized events. And so actually the winner of the Queso Cup gets a golden ticket, which is I believe a sum of money. And then also just a spot at the Clash Royale World Finals, like regardless of any other performances. So, you know, obviously everyone wants to perform and do well and get that golden ticket. But the reason it's on the Royal Tournament right now that you guys can see even on your own game is because top 128 in this tournament do unlock, uh, do get past the qualifying stage for this uh, tournament for the Queso Cup. So top 128 in the world, you know, usually uh, GTs are pretty selective anyways because top 100 gets the special emote, the global tourney emote that I myself have gotten right here and you also get gold for it but this is top 128 gets past the qualifying stage and a lot of pros were actually upset about this because uh, global tourneys can be luck based you know can be snipe based uh, people like to snipe others a lot it's interesting but i mean it is the format that it is so uh, yeah that's just my brief intro to kind of the context behind this case of global tourney in case you were interested and obviously, I'm going to be playing with 3.0 Expo Cycle. For some reason, uh, my deck got pasted from my deck selection screen. But let me just get Expo in. Uh, it's pretty cool that you can now copy-paste from the Challenges tab. And we're going to be playing with 3.0 Expo Cycle today. Uh, you're probably not surprised, you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while. 3.0 Expo Cycle is a pretty common occurrence in pretty much every global tourney. I usually play it uh, for you guys because... I understand a lot of you don't have Archer Queen unlocked, and also it is my comfort version, I would say, um, through Pinot Expo Cycle. I just like it more, I guess. Uh, we are going to be playing with Electra Spirit, and so, you know, Ice Spirit has gotten buffed. We are in the new set of balance changes, uh, and Ice Spirit got buffed, but in this kind of format, I think Electra Spirit's just important because you need to cover something like Clone, something like Graveyard, Giant Graveyard at least. And so Ice Spirit's better in, I would say, mo more matchups than Electra is better in, but Electra just offers the coverage that Ice doesn't in case you match up against something like Lava Clone. And so, you know, we are in a global tourney where losses are limited. We only have five max losses. And so in that case, I would rather play the best and safest version of expo and i would say that is because of the electro spirit because again you cover clone you cover golem clone lava clone um giant graveyard you have another graveyard answer you have more answers against skelly king even though it is worse against like earthquake decks beatdown decks without night witch uh bridge bam i do think it's important so that's just kind of my explanation uh you guys can use whatever you want but if you are playing the global tourney i'd say electro spirit gives you a better shot uh, against some matchups. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be playing with 3.0 Expo Cycle, and honestly, at this point, you know, I always uploaded 3.0 even when it was at its worst. Now 3.0 is actually doing pretty well because, you know, Archers were buffed, Ice Spirit was buffed, but I'm using Electro, but still Archers were buffed, Earthquake was nerfed, uh, but still, the meta's looking pretty rough still, at least... Uh, some decks because I was talking to Aragon and he said it's really hard to push because there's so much Golden Knight and Golden Knight is just a straight up big counter to Expo now which really sucks. Uh, so the meta is not perfect but it's definitely better than it has been for 3.0 and so hopefully we can do well. Uh, if you're familiar with my channel you know that I usually like to get uh, the first few wins in so in today's video I'll probably going for 10 wins even though it's going to take quite a while uh, and the intro's already been pretty long. But, I mean, I guess I'm no stranger to long videos. I make really long videos sometimes. And so, yeah, I guess we're just going to be going from 0 to 10 wins. I'm doing commentary like I am right now. I'll be going over my thought process and uh, decision-making while I play live. Uh, live commentary, by the way, a lot of people sometimes ask, like, someone thought it was a voiceover. But for the most part, I pretty much always do live commentary. Just wanted to get that out there. 
Um, but yeah, so we're at zero wins. We're going to be trying to go for 10. Let's get into things and try and get a nice clean start to our global tourney. So I found the first match against Big D from Death Proof. And so with this kind of starting hand, I think I'm going to leak for a little bit and then cycle Archer's first play if he doesn't do anything. And so, so we're going to just cycle Archer's. Golem in the back. Let's expo. This is going to be risky, possibly, because he could tower trade um, if he plays well. And we already cycled archers, but okay, it's going to be golem cannon, because of course it is. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention, I guess, at, in these kind of early global tournament uh, situations, like early wins, people are going to be playing whatever they want, honestly. So I'm going to go for an e-spirit after uh, four bats get spawned, and then knight takes out the night witch. Perfect. So usually what I like to do is isolate uh, the night witch. Also, by the way, going to log this golem back. Uh, tower should target the mega minion afterwards. Yes, it does. Perfect. And then I think that's going to be a clean defense. Unless he has, like, a zap, then I'm going to have to react. And, okay, goes for a baby dragon. I will just fireball everything. Going to be quite a bit of damage, I think. We should be about even. Um, but, yeah, yeah, we're pretty much even, actually. I have, like, a bit more damage taken than him. But, you know, golem matchup. Kind of annoying that he went golem first play when I split archers. Uh, but, yeah, I guess ideally I wouldn't have split archers. I would have, you know, just gone expo. But I'm going to leak right now because I don't want a repeat of the last situation. I will just expo again into his golem. You know, very happy for him to just go cannon into this again. Uh, or he might even just ignore it. If he ignores it, that's going to be more problematic because he could potentially uh, make something happen. Like, if he has, say, a lightning, that would be pretty bad. But going to Tesla, let's find out if he has a lightning. And he does. Okay, so... We're going to need to get some DPS down on this golem instantly, and then log it back too, I think. Uh, hopefully before he gets a second hit. Okay, nice. Golem was taken out. Let's go for an E-Spirit up high to deal with the Night Witch Bats, and that is going to be a flawless defense for the most part. Not, not super flawless because we took damage, but that is basically the best I could do considering he went Lightning, and that is actually the right play. For the golem player's side, in my opinion. Um, and wow, he's going for baby dragon. I guess I have to go archers. Kind of awkward, actually. So maybe not even a bad baby dragon. You know, forcing out awkward archers. Gonna go expo now. Looks weird, but it's gonna take the tower. And then it will kind of act as a defensive expo. This actually might be maybe a mistake. But I'm still gonna Tesla. This is the anti-lightning Tesla placement. Um, so we can't lightning my tower. And then I will try and cycle back very rapidly to another Tesla. As he is almost certainly... Uh, yes, going to lightning the Tesla. So going to go for another Tesla, already cycled back, and then Knight. And see, this is where the Expo is really clutch, actually, because you can see that it's targeting the Golem, uh, or the Night Witch, rather, even though he has Golemites tanking, because, you know, the Expo just works like that. Uh, so really cool and useful there. Going to go Archers off to the side, and that is going to be a nice win <laughs> against Golem Lightning. Pretty classic version, except he has a cannon in there for whatever reason. I don't know what's up with that. Um, but yeah, you know, hopefully it showed you guys how to deal with Golem first play. If you aren't comfortable going in like I did, you can just defend as well, but I'm personally pretty experienced with this kind of situation, and I did just choose to, um, expo so that I could kind of take tower, and then I would be able to defend afterwards. Um, but yeah, you know, pretty bad matchup, I would say, so not off to a great start. But I guess we are off to a great start because we won, but let's keep it going. Uh, in these lower wins, you know, opponents aren't that experienced either, so hopefully it shouldn't be too bad even if we get countered uh, quite a bit. Gonna go log, because I already cycled Leaf Spirit, and I don't want to take Wallbreaker damage in either side. And this is most likely just going to be some kind of minor Wallbreakers deck. He has a Bandit, which tells me it's probably going to be Mega Knight. And that is honestly not a great sign, because I really don't like this matchup, actually. Um, I find it pretty hard, but... Okay, he goes for a Princess at the bridge. I'm going to Expo. Seems weird, but I think it'll be good because he just committed a lot of Elixir. Okay, it was actually really bad. Uh, that's on me. Um, but Knight will survive this uh, two mini P.E.K.K.A. hit, so then I can go Archers for this E-Barb. Uh, and then I guess I have to take that damage, sadly, because I can't really overcommit. Okay, so lesson learned, don't Expo. Um, sometimes, honestly, I was talking in my server the other day about like playstyles. And I feel like my playstyle is a mix of, like, all the pros that I've learned from, like, 7-4, Ian, and Betfist mainly, recently. Um, or I guess 7-4, Dank, Ganon, and Ian would be the main three. And then Betfist more recently when I got to learn. Uh, but sometimes I also just go on autopilot mode and go for random expos, like just now. And it never pays off, so I would not advise uh, that. But anyways, on that note, I could expo with this big counter push, but I'm not going to. I'm actually just going to let him respond to it. 
with the mini P.E.K.K.A. And then mini P.E.K.K.A. will get taken out by the Tesla, so that's technically just down 4 from that. And I can just Expo, and he does have E-Barbs, unfortunately, but uh, maybe Archer Skellies can do work. He does get a pretty good Zap in, actually, so he does have Zap. Uh, so we do are going to keep that in mind, I guess. He has a Zap in this deck, so, you know, I, I can't really go Skeletons right away when he goes E-Barbs, but now I'm a bit worried about his Princess at the Bridge. Okay, just gonna go E-Spirit. I will take one Wallbreaker hit. Sadly, E-Spirit's not the best sometimes, because of stuff like that. Uh, you take a hit against Wallbreakers, but I still think this is fine. Gonna Expo, and we should have outcycled his E-Barbs here, I'm pretty sure. Yep, so goes Mini P.E.K.K.A. and then Bandit, and wow, I did not expect uh, the Archers to go both opposite lane. I actually kind of played them in the middle for the very reason that they would help out, but I'm gonna have to let this Expo die, I think. Uh, because he has E-Barbs down, can't really do anything about it. But I'm going to try and make something happen out of the next Expo. So this Expo should hopefully put in work. Uh, we have outcycled his E-Barbs, outcycled most of his counters, and okay, he is going to have a Mega Knight. So let's go for Archers and then cycle back to our Knight here. And wow, Wallbreakers just do so much damage to the Expo, that's kind of unfortunate. Um, and actually, we're not going to get too far with this push, unfortunately. But... We can still try and keep up pressure, I guess. Okay, never mind. I'm actually just going to fireball that. Yeah, this kind of sucks. It's honestly kind of my own doing as well because uh, I did just go for Expos. But I can hopefully still come back from this and show you guys how to come back when you're down so much. And that's probably just going to be by playing really patiently. So, you know, I want to just keep spamming Expos right now, but I don't think I can. Uh, and that is a lot of fireball value, so I'm just going to go uh, Skellies to distract a bit. And then I'm going to Expo. I think he definitely doesn't have enough for a Mega Knight at least right away. Maybe he will after a bit, but yeah, as you can see, he went mini P.E.K.K.A. Because he didn't have enough for a Mega Knight straight away. Gonna go uh, log on the Wall Breakers and then Skellies for the mini P.E.K.K.A. Then Knight in front, because uh, I need this connection, and wow, he is still holding on. Um, but Expo should get a little bit of damage. Nope, goes for Princess. Still gonna Expo, I think, because he still shouldn't have enough for a Mega Knight. Because uh, he just played a pretty late Princess. Yep. But those were, I guess, bad archers. Uh, gonna log these E-Barbs back. And then I have to go Skellies on the right for the Wall Breakers. Skeletons can fully counter Wall Breakers if you play it perfectly. And wow, that was a really clean defense. Gonna defense of Expo straight away now to predict the Princess at the bridge. Because that would be very problematic for me. And okay, looks like he does not go for it. He goes for Bandit Mini P.E.K.K.A. Pri okay, still goes for Princess at the bridge, but in kind of a weird way, I guess. Esprit gets a lot of value there, though. And now I think it's time for another Expo. He's probably going to Mega Knight this, so it might be hard to break through. The main... Okay, going to Fireball that. The main key in this is just going to be to get Spell Value on the tower. Because I'm not really expecting to break through. Uh, unless he doesn't play Mega Knight, I guess. That's kind of on him, though. He definitely should have gone Mega Knight. He just tried to defend that without going Mega Knight for some reason. Um, but yeah, if he went Mega Knight, right? My main goal would have been to just get uh, spells on the tower. Like Fireball the Mega Knight plus tower. You know, Fireball the E-Barbs plus tower, which I did. Um, and that is going to be GG, so I apologize, kind of a sloppy game, uh, only the second game of the video, but we were able to play pretty perfectly at the end and come back. He did overcommit quite a lot in that one sequence where I went Expo because I knew he wouldn't have enough Elixir for the Mega Knight. That's just kind of an intuition thing that you get over time, you know, counting Elixir and knowing that they won't have enough. The Mega Knight Wallbreakers is historically a matchup that I'm pretty bad at, even though this is definitely Expo's hard counter because he doesn't actually have any direct damage except for like princes at the bridge um he doesn't even have a minor but yeah just lesson learned i guess don't go for super aggressive expos at the start like i did and then you should be pretty fine e even though uh hopefully i showed you guys as well you know if you're down a lot uh just figure out what you want to do in the matchup and you can come back as well uh but yeah into the next match against ghana gonna just cycle log i guess because he's not doing anything goes for a musketeer i guess i'll just fireball i don't really want to go knight not knowing what his deck is, and then I might need Knight for something else. So I'll just Fireball it. I'm technically down to Elixir, because I cycled Log into nothing, and it could be Balloon Cycle, I guess. Um, just, let's just go E-Spirit for the Musketeer, and not take any damage, and yeah, this is looking like Balloon Cycle, because Minor Musketeer. Uh, yeah, Bar Barrel 2. But Archer should hopefully not mean I have to Log that. Okay, I still should have logged it, I guess, but gonna Expo now, and then Knight to predict the Bomb Tower. Because he already cycled Ice Golem. Yup, exactly. Uh, so that's just kind of a knowledge thing. Because, um, you know, he needs Ice Golem to stall... Uh, or to tank for the Expo. And he already cycled it. Let's log this Musketeer back. And then go E-Spirit 2 to kind of stall it out a little bit. And sadly, he's already back to an Ice Golem. So that push didn't really do anything. 
because um, he was able to stall. Also, I did misplace my expo, though, so that's kind of on me. We actually end up taking Ice Golem damage. Um, so, yeah, I could expo again. I think that would be a pretty bad play, though. So, against Balloon Cycle, it's usually kind of a counter push matchup where you don't just spam expos. You kind of, like, defend expo when you're in a good spot. But for me, I expoed because he cycled Ice Golem already. And now I'm going to expo this time because he's looking to be down Elixir. Goes for another Bomb Tower. If he's smart, I think he's going to go Balloon. Goes for Bar Barrel Miner instead. So I'll just go Skellies plus Log on everything. E-Spirit as well. Sadly, he is back to Ice Golem. So this is the problem, you know. I did the math once. Ice Golem literally stalls out 29% of an Expo's HP. So even though I defended that Expo pretty well, I would say, you know, I caught the Bar Barrel. I logged everything. I E-Spirited the Miner. He was still able to just stall it out with the Ice Golem in the end. So kind of sucks. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh... We'll just kind of reset again, and I think just pre-Tesla this time for the balloon. And now he might balloon opposite, so in a situation like this where you've already cycled a Tesla, um, okay, he's kind of overcommitting to the Tesla, I would say. Just going to log the Musketeer 2 to keep my Archer alive, because it will kind of counter push. Yep. And then going to split Archers, I guess. Don't want to commit to a Tesla just yet. Uh, and I will Expo now, because he just cycled his Musketeer. Goes for a Miner, um, and there's the balloon. Coming at down, I'll fireball it. I actually reacted very late to that. Okay, never mind. I actually reacted perfectly to that, but I thought I reacted late because I kind of I was trying to describe it, and then I kind of stalled myself, I guess. But anyways, night for the musketeer. We do get the expo connection. Wonderful. He goes for a predictive bomb tower, which is actually a pretty nice idea because you know if I was just spamming expos, he would kind of. Uh, just get away with that but i'm just gonna go tesla now and in a situation like this when they're spamming everything with the balloon you just want to get fireball value like look at that fireball the barbarian fireball the balloon and the ice golem there's no reason not to do that um so yeah just really clean defense and reset now let's go for an expo because i have a tesla live and I, are, I am up elixir i think and so i'm not expecting too much out of this again because last time nothing really happened but definitely going to try and catch the Miner still with E-Spirit plus Skeletons. Catch the Barbell with Archers. And uh, Musketeer is getting attacked by the Expo. I think I don't need to commit to it because of that reason. Okay, still gets a hit. But we do get an Expo connection on Tower. Nice. It's now going to reset with a pre-Tesla. And th again, if he chooses to go Balloon in the right, I'll just pull it over with an Expo like this. So not really an issue. Um, in fact, I'll just Expo anyways. Because he's... Okay, he goes for a Minor Balloon. Let's go for uh, Spirit... And then Skellies for the Miner. Knight for the Musketeer. And as you can see, Balloon does get pulled into the Tesla. So that's just kind of a um, placement knowledge there that works out really well. And if I reacted faster, I would have fireballed the Musketeer. Sadly, I didn't. But he's going to give me a ton of fireball value. So I'll just take it. Fireball all of that. And then log the Musketeer back. And then... We do need to get Archers down on this Balloon as well, though. Because that is getting a bit scary. But I think we're fine. Uh, Knight for the Musketeer. Log all back because skellies are kind of stalling a bit and he's still going right lane for some reason even though he has more damage okay that makes sense he finally switched uh so again you know okay that was a misclick wow that's really bad by me actually really bad uh that was meant to be a fireball um so yeah do not expo like that uh that was just a really bad misclick on my end but you know i think we're still fine goes for ice golem loon there so gonna go archer same lane log back and then uh, tower should be on the balloon, and I can just fireball and log to end the match off. Don't really need to worry about this balloon, because there's only 5 seconds left, so just stalling out would be fine. That's going to be GG. Um, a bit messy again, because I, I, mean, I played it pretty well, I would say, except for that one really bad expo. Just be careful of misclicking like I did, because uh, that's really bad. Um, but yeah, that was meant to be a fireball, and I guess general point that... You, I'm, not, I'm not sure where you guys struggle with in that matchup, because I feel like now it's a bit easier. You know, still not the best matchup, I would say, because if they play well, they'll do well. But the balloon nerf was definitely significant. Well, it was a rework, but it was just a straight-up nerf against buildings, because Tesla now survives a balloon hit no matter what. Uh, Expo survives two balloon hits, just barely, I think. So, um, yeah, just defend and find your good offensive Expo spots. For me, I went in when he cycled Ice Golems or when I was up Elixir and stuff like that. Also, we did get Masteries, so let me just, uh, wow, 150 gems, that's really nice. And Gold Tesla, that looks sick, actually. It's my first level 5 uh, Mastery, I think, on any of my accounts. And 150 gems is huge, because that kind of makes up for my, um, 
for my GCs, I've been playing a few GCs recently with different decks. Uh, and Skeleton is level 5 as well, I believe. Nice, and also I just like to screenshot this kind of thing, so that's why I'm screenshotting. But yeah, 300 gems, that is amazing. Um, yeah, so like, Masteries are honestly pretty cool. I feel like they're one of the coolest things of the update, uh, by far. You know, I wasn't a big fan of the new profile badges, but Masteries are cool. And Golden, Skellies, and Tesla are great. You know, obviously I play a lot of Expo, so those would be my highest Masteries. But yeah... Off to a pretty good start, 3-0 against some uh, interesting matchups so far, but the minor balloon deck was definitely a meta deck. Uh, let's just go Eastbird at the bridge, and Ghost comes in, so this could be 3 Musketeers, you know, the new meta 3M pump with Mirror. Has been going around like crazy recently. Could also be just P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Bam, though. Or just normal Bridge Bam. Looks like it is going to be P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Bam. So I guess I'll just center Tesla. Sadly, I would love to fireball that, but my cycle is kind of messed up, so I can't. Um, let's see if he snipes this with a bandit. No, he does not. So Tesla will just take out the magic archer. I can just split archers now. And, uh, yeah, so Pekka Bridge Bam. Well, actually, it could... Okay, that's a really interesting poison. I'm gonna Expo, because I usually don't think he should be going for poisons like those. I'm gonna go Skeletons for the bandit as well. And it looks like our opponent might have lost already. Goes for a Pekka. I think I will Knight, actually. This is, like, kind of a suicidal Knight. But it is, you know, stalling out the P.E.K.K.A. a little bit. And then I can just kite it to the middle with uh, E-Spirit and then go Archers. And that's going to be a flawless defense against the P.E.K.K.A. Also, by the way, one another downside of what he did just now, he is now very much outcycled in terms of his P.E.K.K.A. So he should be like three cards away from the P.E.K.K.A. Um, and this is kind of scary because I think he's going to batter ram in front. Nope, goes E-Wiz instead. I'll actually just fireball that, I think, because, you know, hitting the Ghost plus E-Wiz... Plus, that's another Expo connection on Tower. And I don't mind just eating, like, one Ghost hit in this lane. Uh, let's just go Skellies for the Bandit. Let's see if he predicts with a Zap. No, he does not. And that is the perfect Skellies placement, by the way, that you want to use against Bandit. Notice how both Towers targeted it. And then also, if he Zapped, um, he still would have walked to the Tower, not dashed. So, yeah, pretty nice. And I think that bar won't get any hits to my Tower, but it will get pretty close. That's the Tesla nerf, in effect, um, actually, before the nerf. The barb didn't get as close. I did an interactions video where I tested it. So just interesting, I guess. Also, Battle Ram buff where it did more damage. Um, but really bad Magic Archer, actually, in my opinion. Because that's just value in the lane that I want to go for. So I don't know why he would do that. Um, it goes for a P.E.K.K.A. Usually when they go P.E.K.K.A., I would say Expo opposite. But in this case, I already have a tower. Basically, like that's in range of two fireballs or like two logs in a fireball. So I really don't need to... Um, Offensive Expo to Pressure Opposite, I will actually just, um, Defensive Expo, and pretty good poison by him, I guess, because his priority should definitely be trying to break through not getting poison damage on tower, so I do like that by him. But yeah, again, I just can't stand by those Magic Archers, because he's giving me my win condition, you know, I just want to spell that tower down, and he's kind of letting me. Um, I was hoping he gave up, actually, so I could take the other crown. Sadly, not going to be the case, but let's just, you know, pull this into the middle to make sure we don't choke. And then that is going to be a nice win against P.E.K.K.A. So, yeah, uh, like I said, at low wins, opponents are usually a bit more inexperienced, so they make a bit uh, of a weird... Or they make some weird plays, I guess. Like, you know, my opponent there just poisoned my archers uh, in single. And then for some reason didn't go P.E.K.K.A. on my first expo. He kind of bled a bandit into it first, then went P.E.K.K.A. But uh, yeah, I guess not too much to say about that matchup. That should be a pretty easy matchup anyways. Like, I would say 65-35 in expo's favor. Maybe a bit worse with Electro Spirit, but Ice Spirit for sure. He should be winning that. Um, but into the next match against Neo Kakaru. Let's give him the good luck. And Cycle Log first play. Since he's not doing anything, could be a heavier deck. Actually going to be possibly another Cycle deck. Because uh, he has a log too, but let's just split archers and see what he has. Okay, it's going to be log bait it looks like, so I'm going to fireball that, but kind of sucks because now I don't have log in cycle for his uh, barrel. So let's see if he chooses to use it. He's actually just not using it for some reason, or I guess he's going to use it soon. Uh, but I'll just go e-spirit to negate damage on the left side. And there's the barrel, so let's just log it. Now we are cycled back. And yeah, log bait classic log bait with uh Galvin gang which is something you never really see so very interesting gonna split archers then fireball the princess again and in this kind of matchup you know it's actually hard like i really don't have one defined strategy to tell you guys you know this is how you play against log bait 
because everyone does everything so differently. You know, I've I've actually been watching a lot of my old replays of Seven Four, one of the old best Expo players in the world, um, of him winning against Logbait, and it's very weird. Like, he does a lot of things that I like to do sometimes, but he does a lot of other things at other times. If that makes sense, like. It's just a matchup where... Okay, and I took damage there. I don't know if it's just me, but I have, like, this weird issue where I think barrels are tricky barrels, even if they aren't. You're just gonna skellies on the princess and then expo, because he might overcommit with a log. Uh, so expo should take out the princess, and wow, he actually just missed my expo. So that's gonna be GG. Um, but I, I f feel kind of bad, actually, because actually that was a really bad play by me, guys. Uh sacrificing the princess and going expo i think that's not worth it because you just take too much damage um by the princess like i i noticed you know my tower was at 2k and if he rocketed the expo i thought he would be low in elixir you know because princess log is five but turns out it didn't actually do too much uh so don't do what i did i would say just uh like commit more to the princess i guess and uh, yeah, don't do what I did with that expo, because if he didn't miss the rocket, I would have been just down 800, which, you know, is still winnable, but obviously in a log bait matchup, not ideal at all, especially because if they play well, you should usually lose this matchup, and uh, if my opponent played perfectly after that point, I definitely would have lost. So, okay, learning lessons, I'm actually learning a lot more from my mistakes right now than what I'm doing well, which is actually usually how it goes, like, you learn a lot more from your mistakes than... Uh, anything else I would say but still you know 5-0 and flawless start so far even though we aren't playing at the top of our game I am again recording this kind of late at night it's like 8 o'clock right now I did want to record earlier but I just called with some friends for a few hours instead and wow golem first play uh, I'll just expo opposite again you know this is my strategy that I like to do because I like to just kind of get it done you know if I defend this perfectly then and goes for a mini P.E.K.K.A. I will actually just let that die and then go for a low Tesla and I think I don't have to go skellies for it. Okay, perfect. So I can go skellies for the golem instead. Just DPS down and firecracker. That is interesting for sure. Um, gonna go for a very low knight here. Looks a bit weird, but my goal is to try and activate king off the firecracker if possible. And looks like we did accomplish that, so perfect. Then really good log to kind of counter push. I'm gonna expo at, at 6 because I think he's gonna be low in elixir. Definitely shouldn't have enough. Yup, for a golem. Let's just go for Skellies to stall the Night Witch for a little bit. And that's going to be an Expo on Tower. Perfect. So, uh, yeah. Interesting Golem player. You know, Golem's first play. Then he has both Mini P.E.K.K.A. and Lumberjack, which is, again, interesting. Because usually it's always one or the t one of the other. Like, one of those two. You never really have both because they fulfill the same role. And, like, a small tank killer. But I'm just going to hover my Knight if he goes for Golem. You know, goes for a Pump. Okay, so it's going to be Golem Pump. Uh, so I guess he doesn't have a Lightning, maybe. And not sure if he has arrows or not. I don't think I've played my archers yet at all, actually. Um, because I, I was kind of scared he'd have arrows. But I'll just go for a knight now. And I guess this is the sequence in which we'll find out if he has, like, what spells he has. He definitely has at least, like, a zap or tornado. But let's see if it's going to be, like, you know, arrows or lightning or what for the Tesla. Archer Queen. Okay. Going to go offset Tesla to the side. And then Skellies to stall the mini peck a little bit. Um, and this is looking kind of bad, I guess, or at least kind of awkward. Because, you know, the mini P.E.K.K.A. is just kind of there doing a lot of damage. Um, but I will just fireball this Archer Queen. And I think he... Yeah, it's going to be gone, so that's good. This is a very weird Golem matchup, guys. Uh, Golem with Archer Queen and then both Lumberjack and mini P.E.K.K.A. Not sure what's going on. But I'm still defending okay, especially because I activated King, by the way. That was huge. Let's just fireball all of this i think after the golemite pops because that's the most ideal time to fireball you know i just blew up all of the golemites then i'm gonna go skeletons to distract the mini pekka log the firecracker back i don't think he has any spells actually like maybe uh but this is a very annoying um <laughs> he has a lot of annoying cards in this i would say let's just go for like a troll tesla because he's he's not gonna take the tower in time um so just Trying to push the golem into the Tesla. Okay, didn't work out. But I'll just go for another Tesla because we cycle pretty fast. And yeah, that's going to be GG. Um, a very weird golem deck, but you know, still, I still think it's good because you know, pr again, principles of going golem first play. And by the way, against that mini Pekka, I could have, uh, if you if you recall, when I went Expo opposite when he went golem first play, 
he went mini pekka on my expo i could have gone you know tesla to snipe the mini pekka in the middle then skeletons to stall but that would have been too much of a commitment i'd say like in that situation you have to kind of let the expo die i would say like not really commit anything to it at all unless he goes like scar me then i would log it um but yeah so hopefully you know helps with the fundamentals and defense afterwards just you know good tesla placements good knight and archers to dps down then really good fireball value on defense and that's going to be six wins so let's keep it going uh up against the match against marco six i guess to celebrate our six wins furnace at the start interesting gonna go east spirit here to stall two waves of the furnace ideally and then sadly our fireball is nowhere in cycle so i guess i'll just go for a tesla instead kind of sucks because i would love to just fireball that um but okay gonna be i guess mirror log bait he could have like bowler minion horde mirror this is a very old deck not sure if i'm gonna be right in calling it goes for rascals too i think i will just fireball them this is risky because again he could have minion horde but i do want tower damage and i have a tesla alive so it should help out against the rascal boy uh, yep there's the minion horde so let's just go for a knight up high tesla is doing work actually look at that one hp tesla being really clutch and that's actually really good so yeah i think he's gonna have bowler in this deck as well Wow, Mirror Minion Horde. Let's just go Archer Skellies. I don't really like that play by him, honestly. A bit too aggressive, it feels like, because very easy to defend. But let's Expo. See if he has a bowler for us. Yeah, he does. That kind of sucks. But I actually misplaced his bowler, I think. So going to Tesla. Um, Should have just gone for it right on the Expo, I think. Then the Expo would have been dead. But instead, you know, he played it a bit low, and I noticed that right away, that it wasn't going to target the Expo immediately, so I went Tesla. Wouldn't always recommend going Expo Tesla at the bridge, but in that case, it was huge, because look, I got... 1500 damage on his tower so obviously worth it there and i actually don't really like this matchup like i remember maybe last year i was playing global tourney and this is the kind of deck that you face like once every five months or something um okay rascals and then uh low barrel i had i was kind of i froze for a bit because i was kind of like mulling over the situation in my head what to do i could have gone knight for the barrel then just logged the rascals actually that might have been better um, but, I don't know. He might mirror his barrel here, actually, so I'm gonna be ready for that. And actually go, okay, he's giving me fireball value. I think he's, like, baiting me into taking that fireball. Bowler at the bridge, just gonna go for a low Tesla to take it out. And, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what our opponent's game plan is here. He's kind of playing all over the place. Gonna expo, he might mirror bowler this. Goes for a fireball, I guess he's trying to spell cycle. But he is not going to be back to a bowler. He's two cards away right now. Um, let's fireball the furnace because I definitely want this connection. And he's back to a bowler now. But Expo's already on tower. Too little, too late for him. That's basically going to be GG. Let's go Expo opposite in the hopes that he's going to give up so that we can take the other tower. Because that would be great. Well, actually, it might be the case. Nice. Uh, let's take the other tower then because, you know, again, I have said this in most of my global tourney videos, but crowns are actually pretty important in these kind of situations because uh, when you get to top 1000, the wins, like your placement on the leaderboard is differentiated by crowns. And I'll show you guys an example of that in the leaderboard. It's funny because I feel like every time I like try and go for two or three crowns, I get, get into this kind of explanation in the video. Then I get into this situation where I'm explaining with a real life example of the leaderboard but anyways here's an example of what i mean right so top 1k you see there are a lot of players who have 26 wins but the one at the top carl the legend has 59 crowns you know it's carl he's a very good lava player um it's his new account i guess and he's doing he's going in doing a lot of work uh so 26 59 crowns then number five has 56 crowns number six has 39 you know and it keeps going down so basically uh in this kind of global attorney uh, format crowns matter to differentiate who ranks higher at the same amount of wins also archer master one of my friends is doing really well wow good for him i guess this is his mini account because uh, he doesn't have any ladder finishes on this account yeah this is definitely his mini uh but yeah archer master doing really well for himself 26 one that's amazing um so it looks like good expo players are doing okay betfist by the way was 23 and one uh sadly i missed it i would have loved to watch that uh, but yeah. Anyways, we are 7-0 and now with a decent score. Actually, 10 crowns isn't very decent. It's actually pretty low. But still, you know, it's better than 7 crowns, very low crowns. Found a match against Legend King. Let's go Eastbird at the bridge first play. And this is a very solid first play because he's probably going to activate King. Yep. 
and it doesn't affect me in any way for the most part because I'm playing Expo a cycle deck anyways. Uh, Skelly's Miner could be, I guess, some kind of Miner Control deck, which I'm not really looking forward to. Could also be like Miner Mortar. Let's go for an Expo opposite. I think it's going to be Miner Mortar, actually. Um, yep, so he goes for a Valk at the bridge. Let's go for a Knight on the Valk. And then I think that's actually going to be an Expo connection on Tower. Yeah, it is. And then we can just Fireball this Archer Queen back. And when he Miners, he's probably going to Miner. Nope, goes Ability instead. So if he Miners the Expo, I will just go for uh, a Spirit Skeletons to catch it. But... Well, okay, so that's really good. Really fortunate that we went Expo at the same time you went for a Queen in the back, but even if I didn't Expo at the same time, if I saw him going Queen in the back, I would react immediately and Expo opposite. Goes for a Mortar. Let's just snipe it. Okay, yeah. Like, that's why I like to cycle cards low against Mortar, because usually they like to do this kind of thing where they, you know, predict what you're going to do. Goes for a Fireball. I guess I'll go a Knight for this Valk, and then Tesla for the Mortar. Bit of an overcommitment, but it doesn't really matter. Actually, because I can afford to overcommit um, up so much damage. Um, and yeah, feels really good. Uh, but this is a terrible matchup, by the way, guys. This is like at least 70-30 for the Mortar player. And 7 for one of the best players that I always talk about. Um, told me that in Mortar, you basically have to win in single. So you have to try and get a connection in single. You know, outcycling them if possible. Let's just go Spirit Skellies for this Miner. Uh, prevent as much damage as possible. Then just split archers, and I might expo, depending on if he cycles something in the back. Kind of hoping he does, because that'll just get a good expo opportunity. It looks like he's playing pretty safe, but still going to expo. And goes for Queen Valk. Let's go Knight, and then Fireball. Unfortunately, got my Knight down a bit late. But actually going to work out pretty well. Let's go Skellies as well, to stall a bit more of the Queen. And that is going to be another connection, so wonderful. Goes for a Mortar low. Let's go for... Wow, okay. Defensive Expo, okay, I actually mis misplaced my E-Spirit, but E-Spirit does come in clutch and retargets the Mortar. That should be GG, I don't know why he's not giving up when that's basically in range, but I guess I'll just Fireball the Valk. It's kind of an overcommit, but it doesn't really matter because he's so low to, uh, so close to losing his tower anyways. And it goes for a pretty Desperation Mortar, I would say. I'm just going to get back to another Fireball and just go for a high Fireball and all of this. Don't even need to hit tower. Rather just play safe and then just cycle back to yet another fireball, actually. That's going to be GG, though. Wow, he is very desperate to get this, but I am not going to let him do it, obviously. And I apologize, but minor fireball plus your entire elixir bar does not do 2,000 damage. Um, and yeah, that is a terrible matchup again, but single elixir is key in any mortar matchup. And that is something that I'm going to remember forever, because I actually lose to mortar most of the time. Uh, any mortar minor deck with a fast cycle like if you think about it they c I actually played this matchup from mortar side against someone in my discord server the other day and it wasn't even close like he was up a thousand damage in single and I still won at the very end and it wasn't even close because it's just such a good matchup like they can just defensive mortar and then minor chip on your tower how are you going to break through you basically won't plus fireball log does so much damage to the expo ever since the expo nerf uh which was a rework but I say it's just a nerf honestly um, but yeah, so long story short, you know, against Mortar, any of these difficult matchups, try your best to win in single, because if not, you're probably going to be struggling. Um, but yeah, 8-0, really nice win. Let's try and get a flawless start to the global tourney with a nice 10-0 score. Uh, okay, I was looking away at my screen for a bit, and he goes barrel for his play, but let's just go Archer's Spirit for it. Um, sadly, no Log. Actually, Log looks like my 8th card in cycle, so that kind of sucks, but another Log Bait matchup. This time looks like we're going to have to prove ourselves and actually play well. Um, okay, never mind. It's going to be wall breakers, I guess. Log bait wall breakers. Log breakers. Uh, but just going to kite this Valk over with skeletons. You know, other tower will help out too. And don't want to take any damage. And he went quite expensive there, I'd say. Like Valk wall breakers. I guess it didn't uh, cost him too much. But I think I'll expo now and find out what else he has in this deck. Because he already wasted his Valk. Going to be his main kind of expo uh tank and gonna go for a log here seems like a weird play but it's actually as you can see gonna catch him off guard goes for a princess at the bridge uh, let's just go for archers for the princess then e-spirit for the barrel and yeah a really good sequence as you can see um i think okay wow i was looking away again he went wall breakers skellies hopefully do enough in time nice okay yeah so skeletons will fully counter wall breakers but you have to react very quickly 
And also you have to uh, hope they don't go for like a small spell on them, even though that's an overcommitment. Um, but yeah. So Lawbreaker's Princess. Not sure if he has like a spell or anything, but he does have a Tesla and Bomber. So this is not looking like the best matchup, actually, if he has like a rocket. If he doesn't, then this is obviously going to be a good matchup. But regardless of matchup, um, you still have to play well. Goes for a Tesla. I think that's actually not going to hit an Expo, if I'm not mistaken. Um, just going to log this low barrel. Set up with a center Tesla there because it'll kind of preemptively stop any kind of wall breaker push. And by the way, like, yeah, this Tesla does not hit this Expo. It hits it over here, but not over here. So I guess I'll just... Uh, I don't want to Expo, though, because you could just wall breakers and I don't have login cycles. So I'll just kind of chill. Go Archers to snipe the Princess. He's giving me fireball value on those bombers every time for some reason. So I guess I'll just take it and then go for a Tesla like this, uh, which will help against wall breakers. One. Two, it'll help against Princess at the bridge. And three, it'll help against the Goblin Barrel. That is a very weird Tesla. I will just Expo. And okay, looks like his spell is going to be um, Fireball. So actually, that I wasn't expecting that. Okay, but speaking of not expecting things... Or I guess he just had a slow reaction time. He did not react to that Expo fast enough at all. And that is basically going to be Tower Down. I'm going to go Tesla Expo opposite lane. Just to kind of catch him off guard a bit, I guess. Um, and then Knight as well. And I guess I have to log this Princess. Um, and now he might Wall Breakers for sure. So I have Skeletons ready for them. And then I have Fireball ready for the Barrel. But it looks like he's just going to give up. So yeah, I gave Well Played. I'll say Well Played, good game. Because it was a pretty good game. Honestly, for him, his Teslas were just a bit off the mark. Although that is a good matchup for Expo, I'd say. Um, as long as you don't take any Princess damage. Because he doesn't have a small spell. If he had, like, a log, then it might actually be a decent matchup for him. Based on the same principle as this one, where they have a fast cycle. And they can defend your Expos. Then again, like, if I defend the Barrels and Wall Breakers perfectly, he won't get damage on my tower. Except, again, Princess at the bridge, the only thing you have to be careful of. But yeah, kind of a all-over-the-place match, but I just kind of sacrificed damage sometimes, went in, did pretty well. That's going to be 9-0. Let's try and get a final match uh, for the video to get a flawless 10 wins to the start of this global tourney, which is going to be important again, because I'm not expecting to qualify for the Queso Cup, but I usually get at least like 25 wins or so. So hopefully I don't, you know, fall short uh, from my average, but... Just gonna split skellies and I guess I'll sickle log. He has skeletons and musketeer of his own. Interesting. Since I already sickled skeletons and log, I'm actually gonna chill and go knight instead of fireball and the musketeer. Especially because I already cycled my log. Um, and this, I think, is gonna be like 2.6 maybe. 2.6 hog rider. Yeah, there's the ice golem. Let's. Uh, I don't really want to expo opposite because he's just gonna hog. Yeah, this matchup I really hate, guys. Never mind, it's going to be Lumberloon. Okay, I actually don't hate this at all. I actually like it quite a lot. Should be a hard counter for me. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, but just going to fireball all of that. Again, like I said, that's basically the only thing you can do. Like I mentioned in the other minor balloon cycle matchup, when they have a ton of stuff on the board, like Ice Golem, Lumberjack, Balloon, you have to fireball. You're not going to defend without a fireball. Um, so yeah, just Tesla fireball straight up. Pretty easy defense, and let's go Archers. And he has a very fast cycle, as you can see. So it looks like he's trying to outcycle our uh, Tesla here, which is why I'm going to sit back, not Expo at all. I've actually learned my lesson in this matchup, guys. I was playing on top ladder like a couple seasons ago, and uh, went up against this matchup, and then I... I did like a sack and attack strategy where I like take some damage to be up in elixir and then make an expo initiative happen. And it didn't work out at all because Raging Balloon does so much damage. Again, just going to fireball this, not going to mess around with anything. You know, I could go archers, but then the lumberjack would have devoured my Tesla. So I'd rather just fireball, even though it feels slow. This is a matchup that is definitely expo's matchup, but it is so fragile that even one misplay or one misstep... And you are probably going to lose, like, half your tower because Raging Balloon does, like, one hit every second. Just ridiculous. Let's just split Archers, even though I don't really like splitting Archers in this matchup. And then just go for a center Tesla, I think. Um, yeah, because I don't really want to commit to one lane with a Tesla because he hasn't either. So just plus Archer plus uh, Fireball will take out the Musketeer. We can just log. And, uh, yeah, we have this Tesla just kind of sitting there. And I'm already close to another one anyways, so... There's a Lumberloon, but I'm just going to go... And yeah, he is spamming so hard, wow. Uh, but 
now is definitely an expo opportunity because uh, the blue Lumberloon is gone and I have an archer counter pushing. Looks like he might actually get back to another Lumberloon, which would kind of suck, but okay, nope, he actually just... Uh, yeah, that's going to be GG, actually, because no matter what he does here, he's kind of screwed. Um, so yeah, GG's really nice. Like I said, pick and choose... Okay, wow, he is not giving up. I'll give him credit for being tenacious, but nope, not happening. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, in that matchup, like I said, pick and choose your spots. It looks easy for Expo. Actually, it's interesting, right? Because to me, it looks like a free win for Expo, but to a lot of you guys... Um, and I'm not trying to look down on anyone, but just to a lot of people I've seen, they say, you know, Lumberloon counters Expo, stuff like that. Uh, but actually, like, if you notice, they have no direct damage except Snowball, so if you just don't let them connect to your tower, with the Lumberloon, they will never get damage, and you can just log cycle them like I was doing, and you will get more damage than them. So, you know, you can even win this with zero Expos, uh, the whole game. Like, you don't even need to play your Expo at all. I would say, by the way, defensive Expos are probably not the move in that matchup, um... I have experimented with them, but I think they just don't really get you value, honestly, so... Like, I guess they could be fine, but I kind of preferred my strategy I tried out in that match, which was just center Tesla, and then Tesla again with the second balloon, and then off that sequence, build an expo push after they overcommit and win. Uh, that, I haven't really tried that before, um, but it worked out really well. Another tip I can give you in this matchup is... I have two more tips, I guess. One... If you can, try and save your archers for the Lumberloon pushes. Go archers same lane instead of splitting them a lot. Uh, one of my friends, Aragon, we were in a call once. We were playing this matchup, and I was splitting archers a lot. And I was like, oh my god, why am I losing? This is like a free win for Expo. And he was like, dude, why are you splitting your archers so much? Like, just save them for the Lumberloon push. And ever since he told me that, I've been doing that. It's been working out really well, actually. So, I did split archers quite a lot in that situation, in that matchup, because I didn't have a better play sometimes. But... If they're being very aggressive, then save your archers, go same lane, uh, help out with everything. Second tip is bats. They try and use bats to push the balloon, at least a good player does, against Expo. Uh, so they go like Lumberloon at the bridge, and then bats to push the balloon kind of away from the uh, middle of the board, kind of more to the outer, outer side of the map. And so that will bypass a Tesla. I'm sorry if my explanation is a bit convoluted, but, like, what I'm trying to say is, like, they try and bypass your Tesla. So, one, try and e-spirit the bat stra straight away. And, two, either place your Tesla one tile closer so that it doesn't get bypassed, or fireball the balloon back into the Tesla. Uh, but don't get bypassed, because you could lose for that as well. It is a matchup where, again, it has a lot of volatility. Expo, if you defend well, you'll be fine. But if you don't, even one misstep, and you will get screwed. But, yeah, that's going to be 10 and 0, guys. Really happy with this start to the Global Tourney. I wasn't playing the best at the start, but I feel like I kind of picked it up, um, and I'm doing pretty well now. So that's going to be a nice 10-0. Uh, start of the Keisu Cup Global Tourney. Uh, hopefully it helps you guys out, because uh, I'm uploading this, you know, right away. I'm going to edit this probably right after recording this, and then try and upload ASAP. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with it, and had some really nice wins. You know, win against this really hard counter, a win against this weird deck. T wins against two Golem first plays, so hopefully that helps you guys out with that. I mean, the log bait match, honestly, I feel kind of bad because I made a pretty bad play. And I got p rewarded because he missed his rocket. But yeah, just don't take princess damage. That's what I learned from my own match. Um, so yeah, even I'm learning stuff pretty much every day sometimes. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a really nice uh, 10 wins. 10 and 0. Hope you guys enjoyed. I have been starting to make Global Tourneys kind of a series on my channel where I just start from 0 and go to, from 0 to 10. Then go 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 to 25, and so on. I'll probably do a similar thing at least up to 20 wins. Not sure if I'll go higher than that because sometimes I just like to play as well, not always just playing for content and recording. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's going to be the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, look forward to part two most likely tomorrow where I'll go to 15 wins. Um, if not, then in the next coming days, I'll definitely be covering a lot of this global tourney. Uh, and yeah, through Pinux with Cycle is in a pretty good spot, I'd say, uh, after the balances. You know, still some pretty bad matchups, but... Earthquake looks a lot more scarce right now, and that's a really good sign. Um, and even if you go up against Earthquake, it's going to be easier for sure. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care, and I will see you in the next one.